Hi everyone, it's Greg here and welcome to Just a Meme Podcast, where we chat to teams using blockchain technologies to solve real world problems. Uh, today, really excited because we've got Edward joining us from Editions that are, they, they're doing NFT ebook publishing on the XRPL. So really excited to have you here and chat through all your plans. Yeah, no, great to be here as well. Uh, thanks, thanks for the invite. Fantastic. Yeah, no worries. Uh, I think we've, we've definitely spoken before, um, but I imagine a lot of people maybe haven't heard your story. So shall we start there? Like, where did you start with publishing, I guess? And then we'll talk about how you got into crypto. Yeah, no. So the publishing um, aspect is really started with my wife, uh, Sandra. She's actually a creator. She's an illustrator to begin with. And she started illustrating, um, uh, children's books, um, about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, and she is a published illustrator. Um, so she has several books out uh, that you can buy worldwide. And, um, one day she decided, okay, why don't I start my own little publishing house, um, just to, um, you know, create new things that weren't there in the space, uh, new, new books, uh, new, new ways of looking at, at things to, uh, support new creators. And that was about five years ago. So a little company called uh, Red Paper Kite. So it's a publishing company that she started and, um, um, she's published uh, quite a few books now for uh, not her own books. Obviously it's not self-publishing, but it's a public proper publishing house uh, yeah. with, uh, with different illustrators and creators and, um, uh, and, um, and so basically I'm part of that company, but, uh, she does most of the work, <laughs> um, <laughs> because I, I myself, um, uh, am a mechanical engineer. I have a totally different background to publishing, um, did a mechanical engineering degree at the university and, uh, uh specialized in aerospace, um, <laughs> in my master's degree, yeah. but never, never, never practiced it and I went into <laughs> consulting. <laughs> So I basically uh, went into consulting, um, uh, um, did, um, estimating product management and private equity. So finance, uh, finance and uh, engineering combined. Yep. And uh, so I'm very different backgrounds. So the publishing, uh, the publishing portion, um, really came from my, from my wife who started the publishing company and, um, I was just doing my engineering, um, um consultancy. I run my own little firm. Um, and which I'm still running, by the way, um, in, a, in addition to oh, <laughs> during the crypto, <laughs> I said the, the, the crypto connection came like probably about three, three years ago for myself, where I just bought some, um, some cryptocurrencies and, um, and held on for them for a while and then subsequently sold them. And then about a year ago, um, or, or yeah, about a year ago. <laughs> I did the unthinkable and I looked at the portfolio I sold <laughs> and, uh, and uh, what it would have been worthwhile, worth uh, right now. Yeah. I held on to it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, probably, well, uh, and then it, I started getting back into it. So, and that's where, um, obviously, uh, COVID hit and, um, the publishing industry really took a hit and so yeah. traditional publishing, uh, because we distributed in bookstores, uh, uh, around, you know, you can get our books in the bookstores and we're distributed. And this is the traditional way where you get a distributor, you get a bookstore, and then, you know, get left with, with the remaining royalties to, to be spread amongst, um, us and the, and, and the creators. Yeah. And then I came up with the idea of, uh, you know, why don't we look into, you know, looking at publishing and, and crypto together. So that's how that journey started last year. Um, because you know, well, uh, the journey into, in, in terms of, um, for myself, you know, I was very excited about, about doing that, but uh, to take my wife along on this journey was a whole other matter. Um, to, to, <laughs> you know, she, she knew zero about cryptocurrency, um, uh, zero about, um, you know, how it all worked. So initially, um, it took a little while. Uh, to get, you know, to get the, the creators, the publishers, and it, this is still an issue, by the way, to get them on board in terms of, um, what is this cryptocurrency? Is it a legit and everything else that goes with it? Yeah. I, it sounds like you're in such a good place to, um, sort of, uh, connect the dots as it were for creators. 
Um, I, I think like, like you're saying, like there's such a huge issue with, we, we've seen how effective creators can monetize through NFTs and stuff now. So I saw the A16Z report. Um, I know that their data is probably a bit biased, but, um, it was something like $174,000 <laughs> was raised per creator versus something like 636 if they went via Spotify or something. And the, like, even, even if they're, you know, a hundred, <laughs> well, maybe 10, 10, an order of magnitude out, like that's still a significant uplift for these creators, even just like doubling would be, you know, it, it would change the lives of people. Like they'd be able to do this full time and stuff like that. So I think, yeah, it's, it's now a point we're at this point where we're a bit of an inflection. Maybe it's web 2.5 where we now need to sort of tip it so that people understand what web three can enable, maybe abstract away the complexities of the blockchain and really give people the utility, um, and education sort of around that. <laughs> exactly. And the, the issues that, that you have in publish, traditional publishing is obviously, um, royalty payments, There's, they're delayed by six to 12 months. So a creator has, has no cash flow, right? So cash flow is a big issue. Obviously, um, crypto solves that issue. So it's, it's, there's problems that, that we're solving. It's not the other way around that we're looking where we have a solution looking for a problem. It's a problem that we're trying to apply a solution to. And then secondary sales, that's huge. I mean, um, recently, um, I think a Harry Potter book sold on top of these for 200,000 pounds. Yes, I think I saw that. And, and obviously, <laughs> obviously, um, you know, the, the author doesn't get any, uh, royalties. Okay. She, she's done really well for herself, but 99.9% .9 of authors don't have that type of exposure. So, um. You know, the secondary tertiary and et cetera sales is a big thing. And the other thing is that, um, that people are not aware of is that, um, the ebook on your Kindle, um, you don't own it. You just have a right to read it. Yeah. And you know that, you know that because you can't sell it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's that in itself. That's why an ebook NFT is such a, an interesting idea because, um, you can, you, you can have a lot of things associated, like what I call a bundle, um, ebook NFT. So, so basically you could have, um, first of, first of all, you create a limited edition. So you, you create rarity around it, which is the same for all NFTs really. But with a book, um, what you can do is that, uh, you can do a lot more interesting things than just an image, right? So you can have the author read the book. And if it's an illustrated book, you have, can have the illustrator um, provide an illustration with it, a different ending, perhaps a different cover. Um, it, it, the possibilities are endless really. And then that can all be, um, what I call a bundle NFT it can be bundled up into, into, a an ebook NFT. And now we also have this thing called an interactive ebook. Um, so there's software platforms where you can embed, um, within the ebook itself, uh, a video, uh, audio um, a, a, a questionnaire, um, based on what the, the book is about. So, and then there's, a, there's a lot of functionality in that sense that makes it a, more of an experience rather than, uh, reading a book. And yeah. so I think that's, that that's interesting. You can, there's a lot of different, um, things that we can do with that in that space. I, I think there's quite an interesting, like just playing that out, um, sort of if you had say, uh, if you bought your daughter or your son, like a character, an NFT character, and then they can sort of see it in the book that they're sort of reading and sort of say, oh yeah, look, look there's your character. And it sort of goes along the, the journey of them learning different stuff and it appears here and appears there, but they have that the whole time because it's tethered to them. Um, and you as the publishing platform, were just putting the framework around that and making it like sort of usable in that way. I think that's really interesting from like a engagement or sort of perspective, cause it's just, it will be a lot more immersive in a way, cause you, you'll sort of, uh, <laughs> grow to sort of associate with it. <laughs> and it's also something that we could implement straight away. So for example, um, you know, there's projects developing metaverses and augmented reality and all those other elements, but 
I think there's still a bit of a way off in terms of and gaming as well. And this, the, the concepts are great and no one eventually will be there, but it's going to take some time for that to be developed, uh, in a sense. So I think we, with us, we, we kind of have something we can, we can straight away tap into and obviously having the one publisher as, um, um, as a, as a test case really to, to prove the concept. So we, we will go first and then we'll bring other publishers micro and small publishers on board as well, because they have the same issues. And so we're thinking of obviously onboarding them, uh, to some extent, uh, as well. And then they can then uh, participate just like us in, in, in the space. Yeah. I, yeah, I was, I was going to say, actually, just running the tape back to, um, sort of composability of NFTs. I think we've seen some examples of where fashion at least I've, I've seen them talk about, well, if you had this cer certain design and you included it in there, say, say there's a character and the cloak is designed by one person and the, I don't know, the, the <laughs> rest of the outfit is another person, but you can, or the boot or something is another person. And each one of those is tagged and it has a certain amount of royalty in it. You can get really granular on how much you pay out. And like you were saying, you can pay out instantly as well. Um, which yeah, really, really helps, um, again, like creators and stuff manage what their expectations are each month over month, at least they're not waiting, like say 12 months for a check to come in. Exactly. And obviously, um, we're also, also obviously waiting for hooks so, so that, that we can get, so, uh, you know, multiple royalty distributions automatically done as well. So, and the additional functionality that hooks brings obviously, um. Yeah. So for, well, for people listening who aren't maybe as clued up on XRPL hooks, XRPL doesn't have smart contracts, but there is a implementation called hooks, uh, which Ed was, uh, referring to, uh, which allows you to sort of make a uh, logic, uh, using accounts as far as I understand it, but I'm not a super technical, so, um, definitely read up on that. Um, so yeah, uh, when did you, I guess, when did you come up? come across like XRPL and how did you, was that just one of the currencies you had perhaps, and you just dived in a bit more and you saw say Ripple launch the creator fund and, and then thought, okay, this, this could line, align really well. <laughs> no, it was kind of like, uh, I obviously knew about XRP, but I didn't actually know about the XRPL and, um, it's actually, uh, one of the other, um, uh, projects, uh, that are developers is a, is a guy called Mega Man. I don't know if you've heard of him. But, uh, right. he, he started this project called Hada and Hada lights. Okay. And, um, he wrote, he wrote a couple of, it was about a year ago. He wrote a couple of articles. He's kind of the first one who started experimenting with the, um, with his own wallets and, uh, creating a token. Um, and so, um, he was really a pioneer yeah. in that aspect. So I read one of these articles, uh, I think published on medium, I can't remember where. And I kind of thought, oh, this is very interesting. And then, um, it led me to, um, some other tokens, uh, I think it's Casino Coin and um, Estates. The, yeah, yeah. The art. Yeah. So, the, so those, that's really kind of the role model type of projects that I that I followed initially, and, and I said, okay, there's something different about it. And then, obviously, found out about you know the other blockchains, and uh, it just it just something clicked with this with the XRPL because it just seemed so neat and, um, effective and that they were doing things correctly and, and still are but in terms of, you know, with, with, um, um, voting in XL, XL 20 and fixing bugs, etc. Yeah. So they're doing things the right way, even though, okay, we're delayed in that aspect, but <laughs> it's at least, at least, it, at least it's good. Right. So, and that's yeah. really important. So that really got. Uh, uh, it's really a confidence that, that, uh, that we got into that and, um, and Hans started really getting more involved in, in, in obviously setting up the project and then obviously in the community as well. Yeah. I think for your use case in particular as well, it seems like a really good fit of payments is it's bread and butter. Okay. We're now getting yeah. hooks and NFTs and other items, but for what best part of 10 years they, or eight, 10 years. They've run without interruption and doing the payments bit. So it's sort of 
royalties and stuff sort of comes naturally almost <laughs> off the back of that. Um, so yeah, it really makes sense for your user. <laughs> and, I've, and I think also the community like, um, and it's, that's still continuing, right? The, yeah. the, the support of the community and, and the, the, the kind of collaborations you can do with other, other projects as well, which is, which is great, which we're, which we are doing, we're doing, you know, some collaborations that are still kind of in the background, uh, not yet released yet, but we're doing some things that uh, are very exciting. Um, uh, and we'll be, we'll kind of want to be, um, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, over promise and under deliver. We'd rather, you know, come out with something solid and not, not say, Hey, and not hype things, so to speak. So, um, we are doing a lot of things in the background and, um, soon to be revealed. <laughs> Uh, Sounds exciting. I mean, uh, yeah, I've talked yeah. to both, um, Zerpcraft and Assetis recently, actually Luca, really good guy. Um, yes. and yeah, tell us about your Zerpcraft. I saw on Twitter that you unveiled, uh, was it a library? I didn't kind of have a lot, lot a lot of time to look at it. Um, that's just where my, yeah, no, uh, right away. <laughs> now uh, it's actually quite a good story because what's happened is that, um, we, we got from over the Zerpcraft and, um, uh, we came up with the idea that we have actually, uh, so there's a, a portal, you can go through the edition portal and you get onto the, the um, editions land. We call it East story land. Okay. Uh, nice. What we're doing, what we're doing is from the books that we have already published, we're creating, um, we are recreating the story in Zerpcraft. Oh, so okay. as you land, as you land, you can actually walk through. So it follows exactly the book, uh, for example, we have, this is the children's book. We follow exactly the story. So you can walk through the, through the land as the story unfolds. That's we cool. haven't really thought about anything of monetization or, or anything like that, but, but it's basically so the reader can go and experience the story that that's, that, that was the, 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 the idea behind it. And what I posted to, today, um, was another, um, uh, another member, um, of Zerpcraft who created this, um, um, this box, um, with, with an inside the box, uh, is, uh, um, a gallery, uh, ah, okay, but I, that's I, what it was. Okay. <laughs> but I, I didn't know about it, that he cr had created this, I, I was <laughs> unaware. So, so there's people doing, uh, like, you know, things for us in the community, uh, building things that I wasn't even aware of. And, that was, uh, my, my way of, you know, introducing, um, that space, uh, that, you know, that's collaboration without knowing. So that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the great things about, well, XRPL community in specific, and then crypto as a whole, it's, it is composable. So you can take, you know, build upon what others are doing and everyone's, I think in it together still, even though we have the tribes and whatever <laughs> going on. Um, but yeah, just to see the amount of crypto collaboration and stuff that uh, happens. It's just amazing. Um, so I guess sort of coming on to what's, what's next for, uh, additions. You've, you said you've got some projects in the pipeline, um, that you can't announce, uh, but is there like a launch date for a platform or, or what's the sort of next steps for you guys? Okay. So, uh, initially we're thinking of doing our own NFT marketplace, but, um, say we are web publishers, right? That's our, that's our niche. So, um, um, recently we had, um, um, we organized a, a meetup, an XRPL meetup in, in Brisbane, in Australia. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I see you've done similar things. Right? Yeah. We, we got the but, London one. You're doing your second one. Yeah. 14th of July. <laughs> yeah. So we organized one in Brisbane and we got five six, no, I think seven projects to turn up, um, oh, nice. quite, uh, yeah. usually successful and, um, uh, and some collaborations came out of that. And one of the, um, presenters was NFT master and there is, um, um, wave two grantee. Yes. Or, and so, uh, they're solely just developing, um, an NFT marketplace and they don't have a token. They just. That's what they do. And so I really like that because that's their niche. And so yeah. we, uh, and they're based in Sydney, and so I can have a chat with them whenever. Um, and so it's an easier collaboration. So, and, and, and basically they can tailor to 
um, to the publishing, um, um, to the publishing industry. And that's, that's really exciting so that we can collab together and, and, and then work from that basis. Um, so, so, so that's, 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 that's the plan to launch our, um, current, all of our published books that, that we have already published and they're going to be launched on that, on that space. And, um, and we go from there, like what I talked about earlier in terms of, um, all kinds of different fantastic combinations that we can think of, um, to, 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 to go with that in the, with these NFT books. Uh, yeah. So the, that's very exciting. So that's, that's the, the, the NFT marketplace, but the other thing that's obviously doing is that we're continuing to, um, support the new, new emerging talent that we've always done with, um. Um, with a publishing company, but we're going to do that with editions as well. So, okay, yeah. um, we're going to support new emerging talent. So that's kind of like what we call a publishing studio. So the new talent, um, they can fly and be on our websites and they can, they can submit their manuscripts and their writings, their illustrations, and then we'll, um, we will, um, curate, curate that we are not going to just do a, uh, wonderful Etsy type based uh, approach, but more of, um, uh, a curated space so we can bring emerging talents on board and then we will publish their, um, their work and then they go onto the NFT marketplace. And so that way they can then uh, generate some additional revenue that they will have at, at this moment in time. So or our published books already, and then newly published, uh, creators. So that's really exciting. Yeah, that sounds cool. It sounds like you get a good, uh, spread of, well, I guess, you, I guess you're doing everything then from, um, writers to, uh, illustrators to whatever else goes in <laughs> to books, uh, animators, animators. Translator. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Minecraft builders. <laughs> so Minecraft. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, the, obviously we're just starting off with, with, you know, doing the publishing first and then obviously. Yeah. <laughs> All of that will come later, but it's just kind of like a little taste of what, what we're, we're, we're proposing to do. Um, so it's exciting from that perspective because there's lots of different other elements, um, that use cases that we are going to explore much later. For example, um, uh, the foreign rights market is, is, is a very big market. We have big book publishing, um, okay. uh, events in Frankfurt and in New York and in London. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. right. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a whole a new use case, but that's, yeah, that's, that's for later as well, obviously, but, um, it, it's a big space and it's, um, it's a large space. So, so potential collaborations in that, um, 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 obviously we're looking forward to as well. And in the meantime, um, the other thing that we do is that, um, we look at some collaborations with other, say other XRP, XRPL projects that might want to create, uh, say a, a comic from their NFT characters. Well, yeah, I was gonna, the images. I was gonna say that cause there's, there's a lot of good NFT projects out in the space. And I, I did wonder whether you were gonna sort of look to, you know, build a, I don't know, whatever it is, a crypto uh, XRP punks, <laughs> um, sort of comic or whatever it is, or one of the other projects. Um, and that'd be really cool to sort of, I guess, explain the journey and sort of play with that, how they can build up their IP. Um, I think I probably, uh, mentioned it last time we spoke, uh, that Gary V seems to be quite intent on making his IP more valuable than Disney. And he's got like the little cartoon characters and <laughs> stuff like that. And he's yeah. going to try and embed them into, you know, books, comics, playing cards and all that. And yeah, this seems like one piece of the puzzle for this IP sort of, uh, <laughs> build up. And, and there's lots of other use cases. So for example, gamers, um, have all of these gaming manuals as well, right? Yeah. That they refer to. Yeah. So there's, there's that aspect too, but you know, obviously, uh, you know, uh, we got to start somewhere with what we know and that's yeah. what we're doing. And then, you know, this is a very long-term type of view here. It's not going to just have, that's why, you know, these are, these are ideas and use cases that, that we will eventually and look into, but, um, that's not going to happen X much. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, awesome. it's, it, it, the, the publishing is very traditional, so it, it takes a lot of time. And now for, from, from first contact to when people are published is, um, you know, from 18 to 24 months. Yeah. 
So obviously we can fast track that bit that now much faster, but, but all, you know, only to a limited extent. So it yeah. does take time. I know that's great. Um, I think that's sort of all the questions I had at least for day today. I didn't know if you wanted to chat about anything else. Um, I think we sort of covered a lot, <laughs> a lot of ground. No, I think it, I, yeah, no, I think it was, it was a great chat and I'm, I'm always, always looking forward to what you guys are doing and I'd like to hear about that. So, uh, so that'd be nice to, to know as well. Yeah. I think we'll be doing a sort of, I don't know how I interview myself sort of thing, but, uh, do a podcast for us. Uh, we're sort of getting closer to launch. Um, and yeah, we'll probably do that soon to try and, um, sort of explain our journey and maybe, maybe we create a comic book, um, <laughs> to go alongside that and that'll be cool. But, um, yep. yeah, why not soon? <laughs> oh, okay. So Sounds great. exciting. Um, well, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, coming on today. Uh, it's been really interesting to hear about the project. Um, I hope everyone who's, uh, listening, uh, still really enjoyed it. Um, I know I did, uh, yeah, if you could get involved, uh, give us a like, send some comments and a review. Um, and that'll be great. And also subscribe and you'll get the next session, uh, to your inbox. And I think we're interviewing, uh, I have to check my notes. I nope, can't remember. Well, I know we have carbon Landau and, um, someone else on the, oh, excellent. on, oh, uh, Evernode. That's it. There you go. So they should be really cool as well. Evernode. <laughs> excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to hear about them. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks again, Edward.